She was born two years after her father lost his battle with cancer with the help of in vitro fertilization. But a federal court in Iowa ruling, because the little girl was born after her father's death, she is not entitled to his Social Security benefits, and the case could now be headed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Let's bring in our legal panel, Dwayne Cates, a criminal defense attorney, Tad Nelson, a former prosecutor. Tad, let me start with you. The Iowa law, and I read it, uh, defines heirs in a way that is so old it actually never envisioned uh, in vitro. It's an old law. Right. Thus, if, if this young girl, Bryn, had been conceived before her father's death, she'd be eligible for benefits. Instead, conception happened after right. his death. I mean, truly, isn't that just a technicality, a distinction without a difference that denies her benefits? Well, Greg, no, it, it really isn't. And here, here's the problem. I mean, this isn't the feel-good story we're trying to make it out to be. The bottom line here is that whatever the law states and however they define it, we're kind of stuck with that. And the legislature can go back and change it. But imagine, I mean, the Social Security benefits are held in trust. And they're given out per the rules of every state. They kind of defer to the states. Right. In this case, if we make an exception to hand out some benefits where the law doesn't, you know, correspond with it, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Then who else deserves benefits? But Dwayne, and that, that's just going to get outrated. Look, a, a Montana or a mini, uh, Minnesota uh, uh, law might allow for benefits here. So isn't there an equal protection problem? Absolutely. You hit the nail right on the head. Whether or not you get benefits in this situation depends entirely on what state you live in. If you lived in California, you wouldn't get benefits. If you lived in Arizona, you would get benefits. And even in Iowa, Iowa changed the law. And if, if this were to come up, to, if the child were born today, the child would get yeah. benefits. What needs to happen is it needs to be nationalized. They need to go back to the of legislature. Course. Whether you think the child should get benefits or you don't think the child should get benefits, they need to make one law that fits everybody. You know, Tad, let me come back to you because I, I read through the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling, and I want to quote this mm -hmm. part of it because I, I really couldn't believe what I was reading. Put it up on the screen. Bryn was not begotten before Bruce Beeler died because she was not conceived until more than a year after his death. For the same reason, she did not have an existing relationship with Bruce Beeler at the time of his death, and she is not entitled to inheritance rights under Iowa law. You know what, Ted? That doesn't make sense because if she was conceived before her father's uh, death but born afterwards, she wouldn't have had a relationship with him under that scenario either. So that, that's a... Uh, an excuse that makes no sense, right? But, but they're trying to stop the slippery slope. Imagine, just let your mind's eye wander. Just think about it. If you would go down to the, the local sperm bank and, and get the sperm of a donor, and now you'd say, hey, give me a donor that's dead. I can get his benefits. Mm -hmm. Until that is legislated out, there, you can only imagine how far you can push this thing. Yeah. You know, they start making a <clears throat> premium on on the donor being dead so you can you know get money from the government that's the concern here right i mean i totally understand that this is feels like the right thing to do let the legislature do it if they want to make it retroactive well, they can but no no they can't it. and i'll tell you why because they did make it uh retroactive they passed a new law that would allow Brynn to receive benefits duane but it's not retroactive and the eighth circuit court of appeals largely ignored it yeah they did and, and here's the thing it's really not a slippery slope because, you know, in some places you get it, in some places you don't. The sperm donor uh, scenario doesn't fit because in almost all the states where you can get the benefits, uh, it has to be contemplated prior to death that the, that the person <coughs> wanted to father a child. And, and, and with that criteria, right. you know, father a child with somebody that he had a relationship with. And so it would cut the, you know, even the existing law would, but the legislature still needs to step in and fix it. They, you know, they need to make a clear definition of what to do. And all these law laws were written well before right. anybody knew that you could father children after you death. You know, there are a lot of archaic laws, but they're still valid. They just can't keep up with technology. Sure. So they're, they're elastic laws, and reasonable interpretation uh, might arguably permit Bryn to receive the benefits here. I want to ask you, Tad, last question to you about the equal protection argument. You know, we go to courts for fairness and equity. How would it be fair that Bryn living, let's say, in California would get benefits, but Bryn living in Iowa doesn't? That's not fair, is it? 
Well, you look, you, you want to make an equal protections argument, but there's also a state rights argument. The bottom line is we have 50 states. Every one of them does so many different things, different, and depending on where you live, you, you know, we have access to medical marijuana in California. We surely don't have it here in Texas. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way of the but world. But it's not I mean, tied to a federal I, program, which is what Social Security is. It's largely a federal program, in some ways administered well, by states. All right. You're right on that, and they need to fix that. But okay. until they do, we're still stuck with it. Hey, uh, Tad Nelson, Dwayne Cates, thank you both for being with us. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Uh,